We have some awesome things in store for the Off Market Operator podcast in 2024. Some really cool guest episodes that have already been filmed as well as going to film soon. Yeah, I'm super excited. Today's show is about what, what scale means. And, and what I mean by that is I, I've been working with a lot of people in 2023 on the coaching side uh, who are trying to scale but are hitting some roadblocks that I want to talk through on today's show. So without further ado, let's get right into the show. Welcome back to the Off Market Operator podcast. I am your host, Cole Rue Johnson. And in today's show, the first show is after New Year's, took a week or two off um, during the month of December to kind of reset for the new year, as I'm sure many of you guys did as well who are listening to this. I have been working in a consulting way role with people, um, investors across the country and brokers, investors and brokers primarily, who uh, do a variety of things, flipping, wholesaling, development. I don't teach them flipping myself. I don't teach them development. I teach them how to find deals. And with that comes the question of scale, right? Scaling to seven, eight figures, one, two, three, four, five million plus in this business, which is, it's a hard business to, to get to massive scale. It's overhead. It's complex. There's a complex business, right? You have, uh, I talk about a lot in the show, but you have fixed overhead and variable revenue. You don't have reoccurring revenue and especially in the off market realm. And so a lot of what my focus goes on w w with clients of mine and talking to people that, that run my companies is understanding scale and what that means. And so the first thing I lay out for people is scale in a business, specifically this business means more profit, not more revenue. Okay. You'd rather be the guy that does three deals per year that takes home net margin, $600,000 than the guy that does 10 deals per year, but takes home net margin, $300,000. And so many of us were new into this game with the ego that comes with it. We're so focused on more deals, more deals, more deals, more deals, more deals, more volume, more sales, more hiring. And yet we forget what's called our net margin. And there's two scenarios to me where it makes sense to not pay attention to net margin. Scenario number one is a hyper growth company where you're looking for exit value. Right. And, and I hate to break it to you, a flipping company, a wholesaling company, a development company, you're not going to sell that as an asset to someone who's going to come in and pay you a two, three X multiple on your revenue to buy that business. It doesn't happen. So with that being said, you don't really get the issue that a lot of these tech startups have not really an issue but the, the thing that a lot of them worry about is just hyper growth, right? Get top line up, get top line up, get top line up, raise money. Who cares about net margin? A lot of these companies that sell guys, there's a lot of reoccurring revenue companies that sell and software companies that sell with losing money every year or barely breaking even, but they sell for multiple revenue, multi, multiple, uh, mul multiples of, of revenue. It's a tongue twister because of the fact that, right, they're recurring revenue and it, they're, they're buying a revenue stream, whoever buys them. But you don't really have that in the real estate space, especially. So we have to think about net margin from the get go. And that's the number one mistake I see people make with scale is that they're not thinking about net margin from the get go. They are thinking about one thing and one thing only scale, ego, more deals, post on Instagram. Like, and it's that game. And what people forget and isn't, isn't reality when someone posts a syndication online, someone posts a fix and flip deal online, a wholesale deal online, they're showing you their gross profit. Okay. They're not even showing you their gross margin, you know, yet their net margin. They're showing you their gross like revenue, their top line. And so with that being said, you guys have to understand if someone posts a $40,000 check, right? Say from a wholesale deal, most likely their gross margin on that. So top of the, after the top of the line expenses are taken out, they're probably going to net, I would say, probably twenty-seven to $30,000 of that. Okay, At gross margin and net margin are different. So you have top line revenue, $40,000 check you see on Instagram. You then have your gross margin. Let's say in this scenario, it's $27,000, $28,000. Then you have your net margin, which is going to be usually 25 to 40%, depending on the size of the company. So let's say it's 30% to be safe. So they have $12,000 of net margin of that $40,000 check. And what you didn't see that went into that deal is marketing, is risk, is payroll. It's stressful nights. Like there's a lot of things that go into net margin that aren't quantified in a dollar amount, like stress, like the tax a business takes on your life. And so the first question I always ask people was, is, what's the end state of your business? Are you trying to build a lifestyle business where you can travel the world and you, you're active, you are wearing three to four hats in your business, but you travel the world and you make good money. That's possible. Or do you want to build a machine that builds the machine that allows you to go do other things? You just have to be clear on that. There's no right or wrong answer. I know guys that are one man shows that make $500,000 a year. And do, do they work four, eight, 10 hours some days? Yeah, absolutely. But I'd way rather be that person, than the guy that has a $4 million operation that's making $50,000 a year, $200,000 a year. It's just scale does not mean more revenue. 
especially in a business where you're not over hyper inflating revenue and doing everything you can to grow top line, no matter what the effect on bottom line, because you're going to sell that business. There's a lot of companies like that, especially startups, and that's fine, but that's not this business. And so you want to take into account your net margin from the get-go and uh, really understand that first part of scale, which is understanding what's the end state of your business. And secondly, after you know the end state of your business, what is the actual net margin of your company? And be honest with yourself. If your company does $100,000 in a month, what do you walk away with? Do you have a partner? Do you have two partners? Do you have th- I know guys who have three partners, right? And, and it's just not a business that, that's very uh, successful with multiple partners because the check has to get cut so many ways. And $100,000 a month in top line and $60,000 in gross probably equals 20 or 30, maybe 35, maybe 40 grand in, in bottom line. And if you have two, three, four, five partners, yet alone reinvesting in the business and hiring more people and, and building more software and infrastructure, now you're splitting $30,000 with four people. And now you're doing all the work to run a multiple million dollar year company to make 100, 200 grand, which is a pain in the ass. You might as well just go get a job, have no risk, have paid time off, have your 401k. Yeah, it's boring, right? It's not the same thrill and rush. But at the end of the day, you're probably losing less brain sales and you have less brain damage being accumulated by going that route. And I put something out on my Instagram about this a while ago, but like it's not running a business isn't a cure-all. Like it's it's hard, it's brutal. And there's a, there's a lot co- there's a lot of cost. It's not just monetary cost. And people forget that. It's cost on their family, cost on their um, emotions, their their psychological state. And you have to take that into account, but focus on your net margin. To me, my end state where I want to really go in 2024 on the real estate side is very high margin, very profitable deals with a very lean team. I would way rather do two to $3 million in a year with a lean team, you know, have a 40% net bottom line margin, um, invest in my people, invest in my team and only go for the really, really, really lucrative deals that make a lot of money. And the other small ones keep the lights on, of course, but that that's, that's my end state for after I've done, I've rebuilt this business so many times, right? Built it, taking it down, split from a partner, taking it down, rebuilt it. I'm on my third or fourth iteration of that now and built it up to several million dollars a year each time in a different way from take number one of, Oh, let's do, Three hundred thousand dollars a month, and cross our fingers and hope you make money. But I was making five, ten grand a month personally. Tore that down, built it again to to two to really. I think our top year is three point three gross, and made a couple hundred, three, four hundred grand. Like that more, took it down, and now have been. I've been rebuilding it over the last six months the right way to, to me, which is lean team, high profit margin, and uh, you know scalable. And uh, to me, I'm, I'm a business builder, so I really like to build people, but then build the business. So hiring, recruiting the right people. So. That is a rant on what scale means in 2024. I hope in 2024, you really define what scale means to you and you get off the internet and not in the sense of don't be on the internet, but in the sense of you don't base your your business decisions off of what you see on someone's Instagram story. Because the reality is it's cut so many ways. There's a lot of costs you don't see. And there's a lot of just non-monetary costs you don't see, stress and things of that nature. So I really, you know, inter- the internet is not reality. And in 2024, I hope you really define for you, not for what Bob online, but for you, what the end state of business looks like, what your actual, you know, happy life looks like, and the kind of income you want to make, and, and really pay attention to your bottom line, your your net margin, what you take home at the end of the day, what you deposit into your own bank account at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, if you're not building a sellable company, that's what matters, right? If you're not, and, and there's other there's other exit strategies in this business, like you're really just trying to build a team around it, so you can just find certain deals. But for most of you guys. That's not the case. Most of you guys, you need to pay attention to your net margin and what goes into your bank account. The numbers, the checks, it's all sexy, but I'm telling you guys, it's not reality at all. Um, so pay attention to your bottom line. Scale responsibly. Scale based on what your end state of business looks like. And I hope 2024 is the year you really start focusing on that. Thank you guys for for hanging out with me for 10 minutes. This is one of the, the episodes, uh, as I reflected to it in the year, I really wanted to record. And again, the Off Market Operator podcast isn't meant to be long. It's meant to be, in, be a deal sourcing podcast and scaling your deal sourcing machine without uh, the the rocks and things that I've tripped over and other people that I know have. And one of the big things is understanding bottom line, right? Flipping homes is, is cool. Wholesaling homes is cool. Doing any kind of real estate is cool. All the stuff that's out there subject to wholesale, but you got to pay attention to your bottom line. It's like the guy that goes and buy, I've been this guy, I, I you know, but you go and buy five rental properties and you own them and all of a sudden you realize at the end of the year, and you actually are honest with yourself besides just posting your your passive income online, when you're actually honest with yourself and you sit down at the end of the year, and yeah, I got $500 in positive cash, but then one thing went wrong in the house and I made zero. And honestly, I'm not getting as much appreciation as I think. Maybe I just, maybe let's pivot here. You can only really make good decisions when you look into the mirror proud 
of yourself by being honest with yourself. And that comes down to paying attention to your bottom line, your true take home and not just playing business for, for ego. So as always, a like, a share, a review, a testimonial means the world. DM me if you have any ideas for the show. And as always, you are only one deal away. Thank you.